just a quick recap on the surprisingly tricky problem of modeling a corner, even though the concept is so simple. The major problem is balancing the thickness of the geometry that makes up the corner with the angles of the edge flow that goes into the corner. For a perfect 90 degree corner with that 45 degree mitre in there, it shouldn't be too tricky for us to overcome that. But for more random angles, so for example, if I grab all of that and rotate it, I don't know, let's say minus 25 degrees, and we want these two to meet at a corner, then something that we can do is we can move that so that they intersect. And now with one of those sides selected, we can go to face and we can find our intersect knife tool. Click that and it'll find all those points where it was intersecting and try to make the appropriate slices for us. Now I can select the edge loops at the other sides there, delete those vertices, and we've kind of got what we want. But as you can tell, it's not quite done it perfectly. So this particular method with a bit of cleanup might work, but it's a little bit unpredictable. Let's undo that a bunch of times with Control Z and we'll talk about a slower method, but at least it's going to be able to handle these unusual angles. So two for edge select, and then I'm going to get the two edges we want to join, which would be this one and this one. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to break out the tiny CAD tool, which we're going to need our tiny CAD add on enabled. And then I'm just going to choose top option auto, and then it's going to find that correct intersection point. And then we would just have to go through and do that same tool for all of these edges. That's not ideal though, because again, clearly we're going to easily get ourselves mixed up if we're not careful with some of these areas. And also that just might not be very plausible. It might be hundreds of edges that we have to meet at intersection. Just before we completely dismiss this method though, let's also take a look at our line tool here which again you're going to need to have the make line add-on enabled to be able to see that and i'm going to click from here hold shift and gesture across the edge that turns orange there which is the one we want to constrain our movement along and then i'm going to select this edge and click again hold shift to constrain it along there and now we're going to be able to meet that edge that we just made let's go back to this and select these two edges and then i'm just going to delete them so there are tools available to be able to find that correct intersection point and we can build our geometry that way at these unusual angles and at least it's controlled but i think it would be better to rely on a different method especially the more complicated the geometry gets so this final method is probably the best, but it just needs a little bit more setup. And if this was part of some other elaborate model, then we're going to need to separate this section for a moment and then join it back later. So let's ride this cool tool out of hell. So actually all we need is the mirror modifier and we need a mirror object. So I'm going to go shift A and add in an empty. Now, first of all, what I've done is I've made sure I've selected these vertices here, shift S cursor to the selected to just make sure the cursor is at that point. And then when we add the empty, it's going to show up there. But the absolute precision of that isn't that relevant as we'll see in a moment. So now I'm going to pick the mirror object, which is this empty. And now when we take this, and when we press R to rotate and then Y, we can see we start to create that corner. So it's not quite perfect yet. So I'm gonna select our object again. I'm gonna choose the bisect. And again, that isn't ideal. So I'm gonna flip that. And now it's gonna cut away that extra geometry that we were trying to do with the knife intersect tool before manually. This is now doing for us. So now G and X, and I can slide that along where I want to make the actual corner. So as you can see, the actual position of this, if I move this up and down the mirror object, it isn't really going to break anything so long as it isn't right at the end of the geometry. And also if we move it on the Y axis, left and right, it doesn't really affect it. So the actual position of the empty isn't too crucial. It's just mainly in this case, the X axis. And the best thing of all is that we can kind of actively completely choose what angle we want. Bringing open the sidebar with the N key means that we also have precision over this. So we could go for about our 45 degrees there for this 90 angle or scrub through and get any angle we want. Once satisfied, we can just select this object and just apply the mirror. And if we tab into edit mode on this, we should be able to see that it's all nicely welded. And if we then decide to extend this bit of geometry at all, I quite like to just fill that face with F and then E to extrude it along. This is a very quick way to change the orientation to that normal, but I could undo that a couple of steps and instead change our orientation to the normal. And if I show the actual gizmo for the move there, you can see that it's now aligned. We can press G and then Y or just hit on the handle and we can do further manipulation from there. 